Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. We are playing some more Historic here on Magic Arena, and today we are playing a really cool combo deck that I happened to uh, get paired against online last night. <clears throat> thought it was uh, thought it looked pretty cool, so we're trying to recreate it, and this is what we've put together. Before we do go over uh, the deck, I do want to remind everybody that if you enjoy the channel, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment below, and hit that bell icon to be notified when the videos go live. Uh, as well as please make sure you are joining the discord channel there is a discord link now again uh, below uh, there's also a few other new links such as the uh, patreon link again not required but uh, i would love for you to at least come check out the discord channel and come interact with uh, me and all the other people who have already joined so a lot of fun i uh, hope to have everybody in there just uh, hanging out and having a good time but uh, with that being said let's uh, hop into this deck we are calling it scrambled eggs so with um <clears throat> historically with eggs there's a bunch of different egg version uh and variants in in magic throughout time it's really what it is it's a way to abuse some form of like mana rock that gets sacrificed for mana and then have them being brought back into play um, repetitively and then just pulling off some kind of like really random combo so that's really what we're doing in this deck this deck what we're trying to do is we are trying to essentially mill ourselves with a diligent excavator now this card um two mana one three whenever you cast a historic spell target player puts the top two cards of their graveyard into, or in their library into their graveyard so historic spells are, are artifacts legendaries and sagas so we're trying to cast as many of those to trigger this hopefully all in just one turn we're going to mill ourselves and then the ending and the end game is to play thassa's oracle and just say okay well we don't have cards in our in our deck we're going to Thassa's Oracle and win the game. So um, now how do we do this? Well, uh, again, we are going to be playing a lot of different uh, egg type cards that sacrifice. They come back. Uh, we also have Mox Amber. So Mox Amber, obviously, it's a zero mana cost artifact. Um, it's a Mox. It taps for a mana pretty much of any color equal to um, whatever color of legendary permanent we have in play. So... We also have a Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. This card's really cool. We're not really concerned about the seven mana ability that uh, that they have. We're we're really concerned about the whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. So this is going to give us extra mana for whenever we actually um, generate. So a Mox Amber would, would make two mana of one color. A Mind Stone would make two colorless. Um, you know, the, these make additional... Uh, mana whenever you sacrifice them because you're tapping them for mana so uh it's really cool uh again we're milling ourselves and then we are going to utilize cards like luris to bring cards back from our graveyard um, we can do this once per turn to two mana or less or what we're really doing is we're underworld breaching uh this card is one of the one of the newer cards from theros now each non-land card in your graveyard has escape the escape cost is equal to the mana cost but we also have to exile three cards from our graveyard so ideally what you want is you want a minimum of two of these excavators in play so you're never really losing uh, a number of cards in your graveyard so what you're doing is casting mox amber essentially tapping mox amber for one or two mana depending on if you have kinnon in play and then you are going to cast another mox amber from your graveyard um, you're going to exile three car three other cards from your graveyard that's going to then trigger excavator you're going to mill yourself for four or two or six just depending on how, how many of these you have in play and then mox is going to come to play you're going to tap that for mana so you're actually generating mana every time you do that you don't really need it it's just going to help you cast other cards from your graveyard but we're just basically going to be casting mox 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 over and over again milling ourselves and then eventually again once we mill ourselves we're going to play thassa's or um uh, stone coil serpent is really in here because it's a zero mana uh, it can be played as a blocker but typically you're just wanting to play this as a zero to mill yourself for more cards and you just go through your deck super fast this this deck depending on the draw can actually win on turn three um, because if you drop a turn two excavator and then have enough zero uh, cost in your hand as well as playing a kinnon on turn three with a mox amber for two mana you can kind of just uh, get there back and forth. So it's very hard to do and you do have to have the ideal draw, but uh, fourth turn is is pretty, um, it's not out of the question. It's, it's uh, I would say it's fairly 
common-ish to be able to win on turn four. So Teferi's in here to obviously stop decks, um, slow them down, and to prevent any kind of interaction while we're trying to combo off. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's really the deck. We're playing 23 lands um, because we are playing a lot of different mana rocks, uh, Mox Ambers, and uh, again, no sideboard because we're playing best of one instead of best of three. We do have the wrap up coming up soon after the gameplay. So we're going to hop into some games real quick, see how we do. And then uh, once once we're done with the wrap up, we're going to talk about what we liked about the deck and what we didn't like. So, all right, let's uh, hop in. Let's see if we can uh, combo off and win a few of these. And uh, we'll be back. Talk to you soon. All right, well, waking up on this beautiful Saturday morning. Pretty, uh, pretty excited to be having some scrambled eggs, so to speak. And then sharing this great news of having three new Patreons. And uh, as promised with the shout outs, we have, uh, we're gonna keep this pretty decent. Can't lure us yet, but. So yeah, so we have three new Patreons, like I mentioned. We have uh, Daniel Russell with the, with the diamonds here. So thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Russell, for that. Also the first Patreon to the channel. Uh, as well as we have two in Platinum tier with uh, Mr. Thule and Shane Miller. So again, thank you guys so much. Can't, can't say that enough. It always, always feels good to know that uh, we do have people supporting the channel. You guys are enjoying the content. So I wonder what main color he's playing. Probably maybe white or black, right? Maybe he's not playing any color. Maybe it's just completely colorless. We are we are playing land, basic land, so. Not many though, but um, we're gonna go after a plains. Oh, red. Okay, I can I can get behind some red. So the question is, do we? Do we? Do we? We're going to drop one of these out for zero. actually will let us replay it for zero and not show the card in our hand all right no uh no mocks yet you do have to worry about um like a storm's wrath or something along those lines and i wonder if he's playing just mono red All right, well, he's gonna go after another land. Well, we're gonna go get another land. Uh, did we mill it? Oh, we milled it. We milled that island, didn't we? Well played, sir, well played. We definitely need a... Uh, definitely need more mana here. And we're going to play this out for zero. Because again, we are trying to hit a mox. Why can we not hit a mox? I think we have to give this a go, right? Still no mox. Wow. We've seen... We've seen half of our deck. So, actually cool. He he's going to be able to 
get us real good. So, really makes me wonder here if this actually does not get Lurrus back. All right, so. So I think we have to play Cannon. Get rid of some land. Right, and then we're gonna tap this for two. Two mana. We are going to Golden Egg. Get three land out. Okay. And we will sacrifice this for two. Two blue. And... I think it might be better just to s set this up again for next turn. One, two, and... All right, perfect. So, uh, no reason for any of the other cards. All right. So ideally, I think those were actually two of the best cards we could have hit, like to to stay in our hand. It is unfortunate that he has two ghost quarters in play though, and knowing that the last time he hit us with his land destruction, we did not search out any land. So it is really weird the uh, background noise we're getting from the game. It's pretty low. And we do have to be pretty careful time-wise because we don't have any extensions. Interesting. So, okay, so drawing a land there is actually really huge. Especially one that comes into play untapped. So we actually want to add mana this way. And we want to... Come on, deck. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I'm pretty sure we should be good here. One, two, three. We get to mill ourselves. Ah, uh, yeah. And the writing was on the wall there. We're going to get back another excavator. Then we're always going to be milling more than what we're casting. We're going to generate mana, and then we are going to Thassa's Oracle him. Awesome. Woo! It was, uh, it was hard to put that, that puzzle together. Oh, man. On to the next game. That um, that took a little less, uh, or that took that took a lot more work than uh, I initially anticipated. Uh, I played one test game against uh, an opponent when I first built this, and it went great, and I comboed off pretty well, pretty quickly. And then I played one against the uh, the Sparky bot, and you know, obviously, I don't don't think that game ever. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you've, if you've ever lost to Sparky.
because that would be some good information to have. Uh, opponent's gonna go first. We have we have two excavators. We're gonna give this a shot. All right. Oh, well, here comes the first one. I don't think we want to start milling yet. All right, this person might be trying to combo off like we did. Hmm. I guess we're gonna mill. Ah, oh, two land. That's unfortunate. I want no attacks. So I wonder if this person's playing the uh, Esper version. They're trying to do. Oh, we did not play. Okay, that was a huge hit. Huge hit right there. So we are going to. All right. Well, question is. Do we... can't really go for it right now. Let's draw some cards. Let's mill some cards. Hitting that land was really, really good. So, we should... Assuming everything stays in play, we should be able to win next turn. And assuming we don't die. I mean, obviously, things can stay in play, and then we're just not in the game anymore. Okay. Vigilant. So the plus side is our opponent might not realize what we're doing. And we might actually get to see the entire combo. Right, well, I think it's time. I think it is time. So we... We're going to play this for zero. And land, land. Okay, perfect. Confirm zero. Land, land, land. Always want to hit the land first because we're never going to be replaying these land. All right, and land in and bury. This is hardly my worst defeat. Oh, they're gonna your ghost spam us. All right, let's let's speed it up then. We are definitely speeding it up with the ability of three of these. All right, well. All we need is... Remember, all you need is two excavators. And this, this is the cool part. He he doesn't realize what's happening. Well, 
one, two, three. And we haven't milled our Thassa's Oracle yet. There we go. All right, well, good game. Kaboom. And that is how you scramble up some eggs. That was. Pretty sweet. We got to uh, see the full combo. Well, on to the next game. We actually forgot for once on game two, but game three is acceptable. <clears throat> Make sure you're drinking your water. Stay hydrated, everybody. Mephisto. All right. Looks like Mephisto is going to get the jump on us and be able to go first. <clears throat> oh yeah do that flip all right so we definitely have a play turn could play this out on turn one too but it's not really where our deck wants to be we're gonna keep this So we have to put together a uh, pretty good string of draws, I feel like, in order to uh, to beat this mono green or gruel deck, depending on what they're playing. Like mono green. Stone coil serpent for two. Right. Well. What do we play here? Could also stone coil for two, have a blocker, mitigate a little bit of damage. So he'll probably have a, uh, no. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> Looks like this game is gonna be over pretty quickly all right so i think we're gonna have to win without playing without playing that tap land it says trample not so we go to one and then we go back to four and we have to win right now well, it's not looking good for the home team everybody all right well looks like we have been quickly put away by mono green all right well uh, you're just gonna dirtle all right, unfortunate. But hey, it is what it is, right? Let's the next game. All right. That was quite a stomping we got by that stompy deck. Mephisto. I think we just played Mephisto with the uh, on a green deck, didn't we? see what happens yep mono green will we get our revenge it's crazy how it'll just oof. Oof, oof, oof. don't like that We're definitely going to bounce the Steel Leaf Champion, right? It's 
a big that's a big chunk of life. So I know we could have played this in a lot different order, but I really wonder if he's playing fight spells or anything of the sort. I don't feel like he is. Really. I feel like I definitely would have prioritized getting out a 5-4. Yep. It's only a matter of time. You got it. That was actually a really good draw. Alright, so they both make red. Would love to hit another mox here. Um, no attacks. So what do we have that we can do? <clears throat> so... I hope he doesn't have a questing beast here. I don't even get a chance to respond to that by sacking this. Um, and no blocks, right? We just have to kind of go for it. <clears throat> so, we are going to Stack this for two red. All right, well, one, two. So every spell now we're definitely getting, we're netting cards in the graveyard. There we go. Perfect. One, two, three. All right, one, two, three. We don't need all of this. That should that should give away what we're trying to do. One, two, three. All right. Well, we're gonna keep on going. Yep, well, we don't need... I'd really like to hit another excavator just to speed up this process a little bit. There we go. Just get this last one out. Try 
Trying to figure out why he hasn't actually conceded yet. Alright, I don't think he believe he knows what's actually happening. Let's tell this guy a good game. We got to uh, exact a revenge on the guy that just beat us, which is kind of cool. You know, that doesn't uh, doesn't get to happen that often, so sweet. It's kind of cool. He uh, completely face stomped us first game. Then we uh, got paired against him again. Dodgy on. And then we were able to kind of face stomp him back while he was on the verge of winning. So things definitely happened. So I think followed Fountain into Hinterland Harbor, into Excavator, into Kinnon on the following turn. Should work. We do need a red land. I do wish we were actually going first. Temple of Triumph. What are you playing? Okay, that was a really sweet draw. So, well, actually, Hollow Fountain. Oh, okay. Okie dokie. Wonder if he's yeah he's gonna plus here right? Cause, oh no okay. Guess it doesn't matter which one we block with. That was a really good draw. So we're gonna go ahead and play you out. And. So I do wish that I do wonder if we could have won this turn. It'd have been close. I think we actually could have won. Yeah, we 100% could have won there. That was a mistake. So Might still be able to win. Let's do blue. Red. Blue. So, one, two, three. Now what? We're going to keep this. We're going to make blue. Yep. And I think we are good to go. We 
are just going to go through our deck. So we're netting one card each turn, so hopefully here when we hit a, uh, another excavator. This is very click intensive, so. Good things he's not seeing he's not seeing the wind condition. I can just keep getting rid of keep getting rid of these artifacts or these land there we're, yeah we're gonna scoop it up we're gonna go through our deck that's his oracle all right awesome man this, this deck's killing me. all right we're gonna try to get one more quick one in Oh, and that is a cool feature it's actually giving us on screen right now that known cards in our uh, in our libraries are face up. One tin soldier. All right, so is this a hand we can keep? I don't think so. It's a hand we can. I think so. Not the best hand, but oh, perfect! That land was a land was a huge draw there. Okay, Johnny's pride mate. Well, shall we slow him down? All right, so good deal. So next turn, we're going to... We are going to... Excavator. Going to plus. We are going to Mindstone. Mill ourselves. So does he have like a removal spell for a creature and then get in for two at Teferi? Okay. Again, we really don't care that Teferi dies. No blocks. Alright, so... What do we do here? Well... We do have Luris. Sack, which we do want to do. All right, well. That Mox Amber was actually a really good draw. So. Hmm. Let's hit it, Johnny. Oh, wow. 
He's about to have some big boys. Gain three. Oh, okay. So I think we're pressured to win here. Um, maybe not pressured to win, but... So we're obviously trying to hit a breach here. Well. Could play an excavator. Gives us a blocker. This lets us gain three life. Um, I think if we mox amber, we're probably fine. We can block with our excavators next turn. Start bringing them back. So we're going to do this because it lets us draw a card. Ox Amber is actually a pretty good. Then we will play a triumph. All right, well. Well, that's unfortunate that he actually had that. Draw land. Can't shock. So. That was a good hit. That was a very, very good hit. All right, well, we definitely need a legendary creature on the board. And land. So I'm pretty sure we got there.
Yep, good game. We were getting there. Wow. That breach was best draw on her deck. We pulled it off, so awesome. All right, everybody. Welcome to the wrap-up. And we did really well with this deck. Uh, we went 5-1. and one. We uh, did decide to play one more game at the end. Just wanted to see if we could get a quick one in. It wasn't super quick, but we uh, still managed to pull the win off, and that was really, really cool to see. Again, really awesome to... Uh, uh, to be able to kind of recreate this deck um it is it is pretty powerful how and easy how quickly you could just mill your deck with a couple of exc excavators and uh one of these underworld breaches this uh underworld breach i feel like is super powerful it, it may not be utilized yet in some of the uh the older formats you know like the eternal formats like vintage or um legacy um but I do feel like this is a card that will probably end up getting abused at some point, and I could potentially seeing it get a ban. I'm not saying it's ban worthy at all right now, um, but I do feel like there's probably something undiscovered that uh, could easily push it to that point. Because the uh, just enabling your deck like that is really really powerful. Now, um, what did we like about the deck? Um, I do feel like um, again. Underworld Breach was really cool. Excavator, the whole that whole interaction with the Excavator and the Mox Ambers, that was really awesome. Being uh, all the recursion we have um, in regards to like Luris and Underworld Breach is really good. Uh, the eggs drawing us cards are really good. And when I say eggs, I mean eggs and globes. Uh, I do like the Mind Stones, but I do think the Mind Stones potentially uh, could be changed. But um, I'm a I'm just a huge fan of Mind Stone, and I, I think it should stay in. Um, and as well as the stone coil serpents being able to uh, cast those for zero is really powerful um, I feel like the only card that might have been a little underwhelming was Teferi But again, I do feel like he's one of those necessary evils in this deck where you have to play him Now again, I feel that way because you have to play him because you're playing Luris in the deck Luris is a white card and I mean he he's white and black, but we're not playing we're not playing any black mana, so we do have to look at him as a white card in this deck. And since we're playing white and we're already playing blue, uh Teferi is kind of like a almost a no-brainer uh in regards to having to play him just because of how powerful his his static ability is of not letting our opponents interact. Now you could there could be an argument made to cut him down to three or maybe even two, and then try pumping um you know adding some kind of like weird card draw or just bumping up one of the cards that are not at a four of to make it a four of um, but that's really just going to be preference i'm going to stick i'm going to stick with this um, i do like it um, i think i might also just put one mountain in the deck instead of maybe one of the um one of the other lands probably one of the triomes i don't think we need the triomes but again uh, red is very important to our deck because we want to make sure that we're casting that breach and hitting that breach so. All right guys. Well, tell me what you think about the deck down in the comments below again, please uh, Please 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 hit that subscribe button again. We are growing uh, We've we've passed 1700 and just like a week ago. We had just passed the thousands. It's, it's pretty crazy seeing uh, how How crazy it's uh, it's all blowing up I hope to see you guys all in the Discord here soon. And again, thank you to the new Patreons as well. And um, you guys have an amazing weekend. We will see you guys next time.